Hi, I'm Brandon. Uh, this is the other 167. I'm glad you have tuned in. Okay, so God doesn't care or judge sexual immorality. Okay, and now I've put this in inverted commas. I've mentioned this before, but if you're probably watching this video and you haven't watched the previous videos, I put this in inverted commas not because I endorse this, but I'm actually speaking on behalf of a lot of us who probably have this notion or we have this uh, uh, certain uh, consensus in our minds or in our heads that somehow maybe God probably doesn't mind it or maybe he's okay because I'm a, now a born again child, I'm only saved, so maybe he's okay. Now let me say this very clearly that God is not okay with any sin. He is not okay with uh, the when we sin. He is not. He, it hurts him. Hurts him. It grieves him. But the difference for a child of God, a born again believer, a person who is born again from above, or born again of spirit, depends into that. Uh, Acts 38. A person who is born again from above. Uh, uh, the difference is God's righteous. Just justice and wrath and his his anger at sin or with sin is satisfied or is meant through Christ's sacrificial uh, death on the cross. So that's the difference between us and those who are not yet born again, or those, those who are unbelievers, or those who are lost. So uh, God doesn't care or judge sexual immorality. This statement is a lie. It is a lie and I'm saying it's a lie because I want you to know, I want you to be aware and I want you to be uh, vigilant of how the evil one works in our life, how he works inside the body of Christ, how he is. Uh, now, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of congregation, I don't want to be specific, a lot of congregation at least that I've been or have, or have attended, there's never been a uh, uh, there's never been uh, an emphasis on sexual sin. It, it's it's hardly seldom spoken about, and somehow the uh, the uh, the notion is that when you're in Christ and and you uh, are uh, loved by Him and, and you're spending time in, in you know you're 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 actually doing whatever your ministry doing your ministry stuff and whatever. Somehow that the more you the more you actually uh, spend time with God, or the more you enjoy His presence, somehow these things will just sort of go away from you. No, you have to address them. You have to know where, how, and how the enemy works. The, the, the very fact that a person feels that somehow these things don't have to be addressed is actually uh, living a lie. You're living a lie, right? You're if you don't, if you feel that that you have no battle. To, to fight every single day, you're actually living a lie because we do have a battle, battle to fight every single day. Now, a lot of churches don't teach or don't emphasize, or a lot of congregations, a lot of preachers, to be very specific, don't emphasize on sexual immorality. But that's a very important thing. We have to address our problems. Now, the, the statement is a lie. God doesn't care or judge sexual immorality, okay? Uh, which He does. and. Uh, but we know that we are living under grace and we know that God is graceful but it is not God's will for you to be passive about your battles. It is not God's will for you to feel like somehow this is irrelevant to you or whatever. This is this doesn't mean anything to you and maybe somehow maybe your maybe that's not your area of, of challenge. And sometimes sexual sin can be very, very powerful. It can be very, very powerful. And unless you are aware of something that's weighing you down and bringing you down and having an impact on your spiritual life, you will never, never grow in the Lord. Okay, so uh, first, now the reason why I'm saying this is very important is because there are two verses in here. There are many more verses also of the scripture. Now, Second Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 11 says, Seeing then that all, all these things shall be dissolved, what manner, then he's talking about God and passing and all that. He's saying, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and God? So you see, that the, the Bible or God's word is is very emphatic about our sanctification, and a lot of our sanctification, apart from sins like, uh, like anger and you know, one not able to have, uh, hold his peace or whatever, and, and sins like. Even uh, unbelief and uh, different things, and doubt and worry, and all of these things. Sexual sin is a very, very uh, predominant problem inside the body of the church. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a very powerful tool that the enemy uses us 
to bring us back into that sort of bondage. He wants to bring us, he wants to adapt us back into that. You know, God is always a God of tomorrow. He always wants the best for us. He always wants us to look ahead and not look behind. But the enemy always likes to draw and bring us back behind to these things. And sexual sin has got a powerful tool in it. Uh, it's, it's called enticement. Now remember that uh, there are actually uh, demons assigned, or there are demons who are uh, who who, uh, who represents certain sins. There's a demon who who represents uh, same-sex relations. There's a demon who represents masturbation. There's a demon who represents pornography. There's a demon who represents the the the, the uh, sin of enticement, like you know, you you be given to entice uh, to a certain uh, thing, or you given to a certain enticing feeling, or whatever that is. So, if we do not, if we don't, if we are not aware about these things, then these things can actually uh, really, really go ahead of us, and then uh, they have dominion over us, right? If you give into something, and then you become a slave of that, right? So, First Thessalonians chapter four, three says, "For this is the will of God, even in our sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication." Now, here's a direct verse, verse uh, where it's actually talking about how uh, sanctification has a lot to do with overcoming sexual immorality or sexual sins or fornication. And I've said this before: fornication and sexual immorality, immorality are synonymous words inside uh, in, from Scripture, and any sexual act which is outside the will of God. Uh, is actually a sin, which is outside of marriage. So uh, God does care for your, se- for your sexual purity. He does care for your life. And if you're married, uh, uh, try and uh, do everything possible to cleave on to your spouse and uh, run run away from sexual immorality. The Book of Proverbs says, "Don't pass. Uh, don't go into the path of wicked. Just avoid pass over it." Do everything possible. Run away, just like Joseph ran away from Potiphar's wife. So I hope this series is helping you. There's a lot of power actually, but with time we have to ramp sometimes things up a little. So I look forward to you to having you in the next video. God bless you with the week.